Good morning and welcome to the Combating Social Bullying Among Older Adults webinar. My name is Brandy Brooks and aside from being the moderator this morning, I am a contract manager for the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Suicide Prevention Program, the sponsors of the webinar. Before I introduce our presenter, Marsha Frankel, I would like to go over a few housekeeping issues. First, should anyone experience any technical difficulties with either the audio or video for this webinar, please dial 1-800-843-9166. Again, that's 1-800-843-9166. And a ReadyTalk representative will be more than happy to help. Second, all telephone lines are muted except mine and Marsha's. So please use the chat function located in the left-hand corner to type in any questions you may have. Given the number of participants, Marsha will do her very best to answer as many questions as possible as we go along and at the end of the webinar during the question and answer period. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me introduce our presenter, Marsha. Marshall Frankel, a licensed independent clinical social worker, LICSW, is also the clinical director of senior services at Jewish Family and Children's Services. Marsha has many years of social work experience, ranging from general hospital social work to both inpatient and outpatient mental health settings. She is a frequent trainer presenter to both lay and professional groups on topics related to older adults and caregivers. In May 2011, Marsha was interviewed on this topic by the New York Times New Old Age blog and Ageless Radio. Her interview on the New Old Age blog received more than 100 comments, a testament to the timeliness of this issue. So without further ado, I will now turn it over to Marsha. Marsha? Hello? Marsha, are you there? Yes, I am. Now you can hear me? Yes, I can. Great. So uh, sh shall I begin? Yes, you can. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this, this presentation. Uh, let me share with you how I started uh, thinking about social bullying among older adults. A few years ago, a small assisted living in the Boston area that I'd consulted to on mental health topics previously contacted me, and the director said that um, they had some bullies, and could I help them with bullying? And when I asked for the questions, it struck me that the behavior she was describing among some of the elder residents was consistent with what we do think of as bullying, but I had never labeled it that previously. This was at the time of the unfortunate death by suicide of Phoebe Prince in Western Mass and bullying was taking over uh, all of our attention amongst younger people. So bullies get older, just like the rest of us. Uh, as one elder living in assisted living said to me, it's like living in a fishbowl. Angry and aggressive people tend to focus on those who are the most vulnerable. Bullying, threats, and humiliation are the most common forms of abuse experienced by older people. Robin Boniface is an assistant professor at the State University in Arizona, and she's in the early stages of studying elder bullying. She estimates that 10 to 20 percent of people in assisted livings and nursing homes experience some type of abuse from fellow residents. My experience is that a high percentage of staff, particularly direct care and dining room staff, are also subjected to verbal taunts and abuse. It can be all too easy to bully someone who doesn't see or hear well, or who has memory issues, or are developmentally disabled, and these folks are not in short supply. Uh, we are going to move to the objectives 
uh, of what I hope uh, you will take away from today's webinar. And we're going to look at what bullying is, what does it mean, and what's the impact on both an individual and an organizational level, and then try to discuss some tools and strategies for addressing bullying. So before we get uh, started on this, I would love to know what field do you represent? Who's participating in the conference today? So if you take a moment to click, uh, we can get a sense of who else is on the line with us this morning. Wow, thank you all for responding. So we have a lot of senior center folks and general social services is what it looks like. And, and um, social services just moved ahead. Okay, and a lot of senior centers um, and Council on Aging. Thank you all. Um, so, is nasty, aggressive behavior always bullying? Uh, I hope that today we can sort some of the differences out and later discuss uh, some of the real life examples that I've heard of. Uh, so I'm going to give you a scenario and I'm going to ask you then to vote on whether you think this is bullying or not. So the scenario is up on your screen now at a senior center that serves as a congregate meal site, a woman yells at another woman for sitting in a chair she always sits in. Is she being a bully? So please put your vote in right now. And so 50% of you think more than 50% of you thinks that she's being a bully. Okay, let's try one more. Uh, the next scenario is uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get up scenario. Yeah, there we go. A resident of an assisted living facility tells a foreign-born staff member that she can't speak English properly and he will see to it that she is being fired. Is he being a bully? So please uh, cast your vote. A hundred percent of you. Now that's a definitive response there. So what, there's a couple of no's coming in. So what um, I want to be sure that we're all thinking about is what's bullying behavior and what's just difficult behavior. And the questions you need to be asking yourself is, uh, what do we know about this person? Is their behavior consistently directed at one or more specific people? or is it directed towards everyone? Was there something that set the person off? And do they have other ways of communicating? So please keep these scenarios in mind as we talk more, and we're going to come back to them at the end of the presentation. As we begin to look at what bullying is, let's first remind ourselves of what the goal is, and that is, to create caring communities for vulnerable seniors and for our staff. So empathy is a very important part of this discussion. And empathy is defined as the capacity to recognize and to some extent share feelings such as sadness or happiness that are being experienced by another. Are there people you work with who have empathy and demonstrate it? I certainly hope so. And do you have others who lack this capacity to some extent? And why might that be? Just take a moment to think about that, if you will. So 
So let's talk about bullies and the bullied a little bit. Bullying is on the continuum of aggressive behavior. And the formal definition of it is someone intentionally and repeatedly causing another person injury or discomfort. Myself and Dr. Boniface from Arizona State University, uh, and I have discussed this at length, and we both think that the issue of it needing to be repeatedly, when it comes to elders in particular, is questionable. Um, there was a situation where I was speaking with a group of people in Worcester, and the, um, they reported a resident service coordinator uh, was talking that there were, was a resident who lived in one of two buildings that are next to each other that are HUD subsidized senior housing. And this resident came to see her in her office in the building next to the one the resident lived in. And she said to her, how come I never see you at any of the social events in our building? And she said, I came once and I was told that we weren't welcome there and I've never come back again. So that's an extreme example of one time. Um, there are many of you who are here from senior centers and I want to share with you a letter to the editor that was published in the town crier in Wilmington in December of this past year. Uh, when I was presenting on this topic, at Minuteman Senior Services, a member of the audience gave me this letter. I don't want to identify the senior center, um, but it was in the area. And this woman wrote a letter that I'm going to read part of. Um, she had lived in, in this town for a number of years and then moved back after 20 years. And she decided to go to Bingo to see if she would know anyone. So I'm going to quote her here. I was treated very rudely, to say the least. These women lied to me at every single table where I tried to sit down at one of the several empty seats without coats, cards, coffee, or purses. I was not even allowed to pull up a chair on the end, as I was told there would be no room for my cards once the chairs were filled. They were the most unfriendly, unwelcoming, mean, and rude group of women I have ever met. There was no one sitting in those seats, and they lied that they were taken. I came 40 minutes early to be sure to get a good seat. Shame on you mean people and what you did to a kind lady that was thinking of offering to volunteer at the center. You are a disgrace to your community. And this woman bravely signed her name. So that was a one-time situation. What Generally, as important is that there is a power imbalance between the bully and the bully. The bully does nothing to cause the bullying, but it can certainly lead them to feeling a great deal of lack of control because the bullying is often unpredictable. This woman went to attend bingo and it never occurred to her she would be treated that way. Moving, moving on and looking at bullying a little further is uh, we know that, uh, actually I skipped one. Uh, hmm. For some reason it, there we go. So bullying requires that someone's trying to gain power and again, it doesn't always, what looks like bullying is not necessarily, it can be just bad behavior. And we're going to discuss that a little more fully. So what does bullying look like? It includes behaviors and actions that can be any of these three kinds. The verbal is sort of the easiest we think of. It's name calling and teasing, insults. The physical can be pushing, hitting, destroying property or stealing. Antisocial or relationship bullying is getting a lot of attention in the media now when it comes to teenagers with cyberbullying. Uh, I've not heard of examples of cyberbullying among elders yet. 
in 10 years that probably won't be something out of the ordinary. Uh, I'd be interested if anybody in the audience has experienced a case of cyberbullying among seniors. Um, let me give you an example, a uh, couple of examples of what bullying can look like. In an exercise class at a senior center, one woman says to another in a very condescending tone that she's doing the exercises all wrong and they shouldn't allow her to take the class. That would be a combination of verbal and antisocial type bullying. Another of the physical kind is in a independent housing situation, uh, a gentleman, we'll call him Joe, was sitting in the common area watching the large screen TV. Another man, who we'll call Bob, came behind him and had previously programmed his remote control so that he could change the channels. So Joe was sitting there watching the TV, and all of a sudden the channels are being changed from behind him. When he realized what was going on, he got up and the two men got into a verbal argument that quickly escalated to a physical argument. And both of them were threatened with eviction. That was physical bullying. The, uh, in terms of the antisocial or relationship bullying, it can be that they ignore when the person's speaking to them spreading rumors. In one housing setting I know, a rumor was spread that this fellow who had been moved up after uh, the flooding in New Orleans, that he had been a formerly homeless person and that his moving to this building meant they were soon going to have many homeless people moving in. And as a result, this fellow was being shunned. So that's an example of it. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what uh, bullies are like. Most bullies um, put others down in order to build themselves up. Amongst elder bullying, they may be seeking control at a time in their life when they feel pretty powerless. They tend to give little thought to the actual damage that their words and their actions cause. A big role in this may be prior prejudices, where uh, they're prejudiced against a particular race or against uh, homosexuals, and they may decide someone's gay without any real information about it, similar to what we've heard about with teenage bullying, and they may um, feel that they're a good victim. Religious differences can play a role in this as well. Um, and so communal living often requires a great deal of adjustments around territory. And bullies may not find that very easy. If we recall that most seniors have not had a lot of experience in living communally, uh, unless they were in the uh, military, uh, they were unlikely to have lived in a dorm at college for the most part or to have gone to a sleepaway summer camp. And so they are not used to sharing space uh, with other people. So I know in a lot of uh, housing situations, people make public space into private space. There's a small group who takes over the living room area or the front of the building area. One rather creative administrator at an assisted living uh, moves the furniture around every few months in order to shake up these arrangements. So who tends to be a uh, bully? Let's talk about um, the, um, the types of bullying victims. Remembering that anyone can fall victim to a bully. The passive victims may show a lot of emotion. 
They may not read social cues well. They may be shy and insecure. They're often anxious people. They also may have an early dementia or a developmental disorder. And they may have some of those characteristics that I mentioned uh, previously, such as being of a minority in terms of race or sexual orientation. The provocative victims can be annoying or irritating to others. They may be quick-tempered themselves. They may egg on the bully. They may be very intrusive. Again, they may be people who have some dementia so that uh, they're asking the same question multiple times uh, they're, or they're being intrusive. So all of this really leads us to saying, is it really bullying? And so the things that we need to be asking are, what situation is it and what type of behavior is really going on? And remembering that behavior can violate community rules but not be bullying. And that there are people who have difficulty communicating and may display aggression. So most of the time the behavior in nursing homes of residents is not bullying. For the most part, it's coming from dementia, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, uh, and it's a different issue than bullying. So at this point, I'd like to uh, stop and respond to any of your questions or comments before we go on any, any further. Um, so I'm looking to see if Okay, um, we're going to go on. There will be another opportunity for some questions or comments from you. Uh, before I, I start, at the end, will I list the name of the Arizona researcher? Absolutely, I'll be happy to do that. Um, let's talk a little bit about schizophrenia and bullying. If you have the issues that I've put up uh, above as some of the common symptoms that people with schizophrenia display, how easy is it to misunderstand or misinterpret what is going on around you and react to what you believe someone said, what they're thinking or did, rather than what they actually said or did? This can come across as bullying, but I would encourage you to think about, is it really bullying or is it a result of their schizophrenia? Often people who are suffering from schizophrenia, think that other people are talking about them, they may be convinced that they are plotting to harm them and can be extremely frightened. They may act to protect himself or others that he believes to be in danger. And on the other hand, some of these symptoms can lead to someone being bullied as they're ca carrying on a conversation or not reading social cues correctly. We want to stress that the mentally ill are no more likely to harm someone than anyone else, and in fact, they're more likely to be victims. The exception to this is that people with MI uh, mental illness may exhibit aggressive behavior when they perceive a threat. And so there was an instance in which several people spoke to me about was this a bullying situation going on? Um, this um, was a situation that came up in Brighton, Massachusetts this past August that many of you may recall where a 54-year-old 
paranoid schizophrenic gentleman killed the 78-year-old wheelchair-bound man who lived in the apartment right below him. Uh, I have no information from the um, housing authority, the Boston Housing Authority, so I only know what was available in the newspaper. But what I did learn of was that um, there had been complaints by this gentleman, the younger gentleman with schizophrenia, that his neighbor below him was making noise and disturbing him. How that was responded to, I'm not clear. And whether, in fact, this gentleman in a wheelchair was somehow sending noise up to the apartment above, or was this a delusion? What's really scary is that the gentleman had a gun license and had a gun and was able uh, to carry this out. What I will caution us to be thinking about is particularly um, those who hear of a paranoid delusion uh, from someone that they investigate and they treat it seriously because the consequences of not addressing it can be fatal, as in this case. In terms of dementia and bullying, which is another category in which people often uh, act aggressively, but it's not really bullying, is, are these important things for us to be thinking about? In dementia, the kind of comments or uh, physical acting out usually does not involve a conscious planned attack on another person. It's most often linked to their decreased impulse control or their frustration with an inability to express their needs, their thoughts, including having pain, or to complete a task that they once could do so easily. And again, we know that people with dementia have a high incidence of hallucinations or delusions, and they can feel they're being threatened. And as a result of feeling threatened, they may act out, either verbally or physically. That is not the same as bullying. So again, I want to caution us all to be thinking that there can be bad, inappropriate behavior but labeling all of it bullying is doing a disservice and doesn't help us to then come up with how we're going to address the uh, situation. Let's turn now and look at the impact on the victim. And these are some of the uh, experiences that the victims report the impact is uh, on them or that mental health clinicians who work with people who are being bullied often see. They can become increasingly isolated. I've known of people who refuse to uh, attend a senior center or refuse to go to the dining room in an assisted living. Um, they can have changes in their eating or their sleeping behavior. Uh, those who are already vulnerable to anxiety and depression can begin to believe the bully's abuse, which can lead to a worsening of their disorder. We hear a great deal about uh, youth bullying and the impact on the victim and many tragic cases of deaths by suicide of young people as a result of bullying. Um, I can't say, fortunately, that I've heard uh, about uh, instances of suicide amongst elder uh, victims of bullying, but I'm not sure we would know that they may not communicate that and it may be just uh, one um, of a series of things that are pushing them to take that extreme step. Staff are also impacted uh, by uh, bullying. Who wants to work in a negative environment? 
and that's what bullying leads to for everyone. And this can affect staff at all levels of an organization. These are some of the impact that we've seen on staff as a result uh, of this. And uh, it also can lead to an impact of staff bullying other staff, that there is this whole um, contagion factor that can be involved with bullying. And other elders who are not being bullied themselves but are witnessing it, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the impact uh, of bystanders, but bullying can lead all of us to feel unsafe and to feel that the staff doesn't care about them because they're not intervening and not protecting them from it. One of the critical things uh, to be aware of is with bullying behavior that it can escalate to physical violence. I gave the example of the two gentlemen uh, with the remote control situation, but this case of um, Laura Lundquist, who was charged with second degree murder in strangling and suffocating her 100-year-old roommate, Elizabeth Barrow, a couple of years ago, really uh, exemplifies why bullying has to be responded to early on. When we think about domestic abuse, we're aware that it doesn't tend to start with a murder. It often starts with verbal, and physical signs, and it can escalate if there's no intervention done. This case, which occurred in a nursing home in Dartmouth, Massachusetts, in September 2009, was really very tragic. So I want to take a minute to speak about it so that we can all keep in mind why it's important to intervene and to be intervene early. Uh, Barrow was a very alert 100-year-old, as we see in the picture here, celebrating her birthday uh, shortly before the murder. She had a large extended family who came to visit often. She enjoyed reading mystery novels. She had moved into this nursing home with her husband, who had died two years earlier. And Laura Lundquist, who was two years younger than she, was moved into the room. Laura exhibited from, again, this is from newspaper reports, uh, she exhibited a lot of the behavior that we discussed earlier in terms of bullies. Uh, she liked to control situations. She had very limited and poor interpersonal relationships. Um, there had been much tension between the roommates. She claimed that the roommate was taking over the room. Now, reportedly, she has a diagnosis of some uh, dementia and paranoia and erratic behavior. She had threatened and pushed some nurses' aides as well. The nursing home tried to have each of the ladies agree to a room switch. Neither of them would agree to leave. Laura Lundquist said, why should I move? If she doesn't like it here, let her move. And Elizabeth Barrow said, I was in this room first. I shared this room with my husband. I'm not leaving. The day of the uh, assault, alleged murder, it occurred that there had been an altercation between the two of them where they were arguing over a um, bedside table and where it was placed. And when the staff came in, they found Elizabeth Barrow strangled with a plastic bag over her head. Uh, Laura Lundquist is in Taunton State Hospital where she's been the past two years and has been found incapable of standing trial. So she's now 100 years old. The tragedy of this case is that whether something could have been done to mediate the situation and have them have different roommates 
would the same thing have gone on with another uh, roommate? Uh, were there things that could have been noted so that Laura Lundquist could have been treated differently? Was she safe to be living in that kind of a situation? There are many unanswerables about it. But what it says is that when um, you notice bullying, you have to take it seriously and act to avoid its escalation. This is my favorite quote of Albert Einstein, and it's probably because it's the only one of his quotes that I actually understand. Uh, but meanwhile, I like it very much. Um, and this really does speak to the role of the bystander. The, the schools are doing a tremendous amount right now in addressing the need to get others to speak up. And it's based on research that's showing in 50% of the cases when a bystander says something, the bullying stops. So that is a very powerful intervention. There was recently in Lynn a case that uh, I'm sure many of the listeners uh, heard about where there was a fight of a group of girls um, at the beginning of the February school vacation. And dozens of students watched this brawl between two girls from Lynn English High School. And some of them made a video of it and posted it on YouTube. And the school did a very interesting response. In addition to handing out suspensions uh, ranging from one to five days, they also assigned all of the students, and I think there were 29 of them involved, to write a term paper. And the term paper was about Kitty Genovese the New York woman who was stabbed to death on a street in 1964 as dozens of neighbors heard and ignored her cries for help. And I thought this punishment was incredibly fitting. And it's this notion that bystanders have a responsibility to act. Um, that's something that if we can spread to senior centers and senior housing and the community at large, I think there'll be far less bullying going on in the world. So let's take another couple of minutes and see uh, to respond to your questions and comments. If you have any, please type them uh, in. There's a very interesting comment from uh, Maureen that uh, says that she thinks most bullies have always been bullies. It seems like society stereotype is that the elderly would not or cannot be bullied because they're viewed as frail and passive. We as professionals know this is not true. The bullying scenarios with elders are different than with other age groups, but the behaviors are the same. I think you're absolutely right on target, and that's been my experience of it. I will say that uh, I think some senior bullies may have been bullies as young people and then learned more socially appropriate ways to gain control over their environment, and that when that's challenged when they're older and faced with either uh, losses physical disabilities, that some of this early behavior may come back. There are probably others who are always bullies and maybe got away with it. Maybe they were in a job where they had many people reporting to them and were able to bully those under them. Um, it's an interesting question. Um, Hope asked that um, I repeat the percentage of success of bystander intervention. 50% of the time when a bystander intervenes, uh, it stops the bullying. So that's very, very important. 
Um, and Barbara's making a very valid point that often elders uh, don't intervene because they're afraid they will become the next victim. Absolutely. So let's go on and talk about what is a culture of zero tolerance of bullying. Now, I know many of you are from senior centers, so you could draw your own circles. This is really more applicable for senior housing. And I tried to put down everybody who might be involved in, in working in the facility or living in the facility. But for any organization, we could draw this kind of a uh, graphic. And the important thing is that the whole organization must embrace this concept of no bullying being permitted. There have to be clear rules and expectations of residents and staff, and that these have to be strictly enforced. The staff have to be empowered, and they have to be taught how to effectively intervene when they or elders are not being treated with respect or dignity. That means the staff has to feel supported by their supervisors and the administration when they enforce a no bullying tolerated here message. And the bully has to be confronted often and clearly. You can't gently ask a bully to stop. This is often perceived as weakness. So I have to tell a little story here. Um, I have in general found that it is not helpful to just go to have a conversation with a group of seniors about how to be nice to each other. Nobody self-identifies as a bully. At least I've not encountered anyone who's done that. And so I went to an assisted living at their um, real request because there was a woman who was blind who was being bullied, that no one wanted her to sit at their table in the dining room, and uh, she was really being treated quite meanly. And they asked if I would please come out. So I came out and uh, called this a conversation about building a caring community. And we had a lovely discussion about the challenges of living in a communal setting and the difficulties that were involved and ways of making their relatively new building a more caring community. And shortly before the end of the presentation, uh, and there was a lot of interaction, a woman raised her hand and self-identified herself as the person who was indeed being bullied and went on for a couple of minutes talking about what her experience of being in the dining room was and how badly she felt and how she was thinking of moving. And it was clearly very moving to a lot of people in the audience. I had tears in my eyes. And just then, another woman got up and said, I don't think blind people should be allowed to live here. And it was shocking. And there was a moment of silence as I was trying to think how to respond, and the executive director quickly got up and clarified that that was not the feelings of uh, the community and that this woman was welcome to be here. And uh, we moved on from there. And at the end of the presentation, uh, the uh, woman who was blind, who spoke so movingly, got a tremendous amount of support. And to a degree, it did help that those residents who have the capacity for empathy did reach out to her in the days and weeks following it. But I think the difficulty is that the woman who spoke up does not see herself as a bully. And she needed to be told that her position was not the majority position and would not be tolerated. So people often say to me, well, we need to be respectful to the bully. We don't want to call them out publicly. 
I say there's ways of calling them out publicly that can be respectful but has to be definitive and clear. So the what's the goal? Oh. The goal is to create caring communities indeed for the people who either attend your senior center, live in your building, and for the staff. We want there to be uh, a place that people feel comfortable and supported, that positive relationships can blossom. And these are some of the components that have to exist for that to happen. Respect has to be for both ourselves and for others, and they both have to exist in order for this to have any impact on the environment. We all need to be willing to accept praise when things go well and blame when things go wrong. I believe that when people uh, care for and respect each other, trust takes root and it grows. And so the important thing is to think about how do we respond to bullying? How do we intervene? So let's turn to looking at how we start to think about intervening when there is bullying going on. The organization, as I said earlier, has to commit to the tenets of equality and respect. Um, I know that the uh, Brookline uh, Senior Center has a very uh, well thought out group of rules that people are given the first time they attend uh, the center. And they modify it regularly as new issues come along. And so uh, it covers what's expected and that includes being welcoming to others and uh, being accepting of differences. And many senior centers are finding that it helps to have clearly spelled out rules and consequences if the rules are not followed is a critical component of these. Um, having staff trainings uh, is more critical even than the resident trainings. What I recommend organizations do is that they find out what the extent of the issues are in their facility. They hold meetings with the staff. They train staff on how to intervene. And that means that if it's a young person who works in a dining room, in many buildings I know it's high school students who come in and serve uh, dinner meals, weekend meals, that they need to be taught that if somebody is bullying them or they observe it between residents, that they will intervene uh, and that they will have support from their supervisor when they intervene. I can think of a case with a nurse's aide in an assisted living who um, the elder said to her, I can't understand you and uh, you're kind or stupid and many other racial kinds of insults. and. Uh, she was trained and said, I would like to help you shower, Mr. Jones, but I can't if you're going to speak to me that way. And as a result, uh, he did not stop. He continued and she said, I'm sorry, then I'm going to have to leave. And she left the um, unit and went and got her supervisor who came in and restated the same information. And this was carried on each and every time until this gentleman learned that his behavior would result in his not getting the care that he needed and indeed wanted. We're going to next watch um, a short YouTube video and then I want to explain this uh, a little bit. The, uh, there were two resident service coordinators in senior housing uh, who were dealing with 
an older gentleman who uh, was very active in the community in planning films and talks for the other Russian-speaking members of the community. And he was uh, very overpowering and difficult to the young recent social work graduate uh, worker. And would get furious and tell us he wasn't going to participate and that we had to do things the way he wanted it was uh, her statements. And we had a consultation with her and her supervisor, who was an experienced social work uh, service coordinator, and talked about limit setting and ways of addressing uh, his behavior. And a few weeks into their um, starting this uh, different approach to him, he called them into the computer room and said, I want to show you this video. And so that's the video that you're going to be uh, watching now. I do want to say, as this is loading, is that uh, the baby bear will be OK um, at the end of it. Marcia, give me about 30 more seconds. I have it on my screen.
So is everyone see is the video over? Yes, it is, Marsha. Okay, thank you. So it's a very powerful um, video in that this gentleman asked the two resident service coordinators to watch the video and then explain that this movie was about their relationship. And he told them that he was acting like the mountain lion, that the young social worker was the baby bear who he was trying to chase, and that the mama bear was the older supervisor who was finally able to put the mountain lion in his place. Now, this is amazing and a true story that if anyone wants verification, I can put you in touch with the resident service coordinators who reported it to me. But what it speaks to is uh, the value of intervening and that not uh, certainly not the majority of people will be able to uh, understand what was going on in their role in this relationship. It doesn't matter, though, as long as their behavior changes and becomes more acceptable. This was at least eight months ago, and just last week I asked the resident service coordinator how this gentleman was doing. And she said, they're best friends now. He follows the rules. He knows when he wants a program. He has to submit the paperwork a week in advance, and their relationship is fine. And that's really important. So when we look further at intervention techniques, it's really important that you be aware that people who uh, are bullies can change and that victims can also change. And so the people who are being bullied, they can benefit from things like assertiveness training, learning to use I statements, I am going to sit down here, uh, the policy of the senior center is that no chairs can uh, be saved for someone who's not in the building yet. Uh, and generally being helped to increase their sense of self-esteem is a very important thing. I think that organizations need to review their policy for changes that can reduce opportunities for bullying. You know, it's one thing to want to sit with a friend we all like to sit and eat or do an activity with people we like. But there are ways of dealing with that. My 94-year-old dad lives in senior housing in Florida. And at his place, the rule is that you all have to be there and come into the dining room together if you want to be seated together. And so he and his group of friends meet in the lobby of the dining room area, and they get seated together. That's one simple change that can sometimes make a difference. At the senior center that I um, read you the letter to the editor earlier, I would suggest that the staff was remiss in allowing that behavior to go on. Now, there may not have been a staff member in the room when this woman came in, but there should have been firm policies that um, there were no seats saved for someone who wasn't even in the building yet. Uh, and I would encourage there to be a greeter at the building, um, somebody who can say, are you new? Is this your first time coming into the senior center? Let me help you find a seat and get settled it would have made that woman's experience much more positive, and she could have proven to be a very helpful volunteer. Um, a situation that a director of a assisted living shared with me, there was a woman who was being a real bully. She was controlling what was going on in all the group activities, and the director had her brought to her office and said to her, we'll call her Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Smith, do you remember what it was like when you had to move here a couple of years ago? Uh -oh. Were you happy to be leaving your apartment and moving into assisted living? And Mrs. Smith, of course, said, no, but I couldn't take care of the apartment anymore and I needed more help. 
And the director said, that's right. And it was a really scary and stressful time for you, wasn't it? Mrs. Smith concurred it was. And she said, well, I really need your help. We're finding that other people are having a tough time when they move in also. And I wonder if we could count on you to help them to settle in and adjust by letting them know that it gets better. What she did was she helped Mrs. Smith to have some control by helping other people, by being given a role in the building, and she helped to enhance any empathy that she had by reminding her of what her experience had been when she moved in. And she got Mrs. Smith to then be helpful in helping others adjust, and her bullying behavior was much decreased. It's very important that staff be encouraged to report incidences of bullying, that we need to know when this is going on so it can be dealt with. And there are certain places in buildings uh, or in senior centers that bullying tends to get focused on. That's where staff should then be uh, found uh, during those periods of time. Next is to uh, really work on reinforcing caring and empathy, acknowledging the members of the community who demonstrate this. Uh, I know some places who give awards. Um, one that did it sort of tongue in cheek uh, was um, the resident who plays best with others. Uh, they did it as a bit of a joke. Uh, from there was some book about everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. And they took it from that. And this came from the resident council. So it was very well accepted. The best antidote to bullying is without doubt empathy. So I want to uh, revisit the scenarios that um, we talked about earlier, and so I'd like you to take a look at the uh, at the scenarios um, and think for yourself: Are they being bullied? And take a moment and go to the. the uh, I'm going to turn to the next screen, and if you would answer for yourself: Are they being bullied? And I think the answer that I hope you come away with is that maybe it depends. That again, as I discussed earlier on, there are a lot of questions that we have to answer. And they include, what's going on with this person? Are they suffering from mental illness? Are they suffering from dementia? Do they have another way of communicating what they're feeling? Uh, is there some other issue that's going on uh, with them? Because this kind of behavior can come from lots of different things, not just bullying. And was there something that set them off? And if we look at that, we'll have a lot of information uh, about whether it's bullying or not. So at this point, the formal presentation is uh, over. I would like to hear your comments, your questions. Please write them down if you uh, have any. And uh, if you have any situations you've encountered that you'd like to share, I'll be happy to share them uh, with others. Um, and the information about the uh, professor I'm going to pull up, it's Dr. Robin Boniface. And she is at Arizona State University School of Social Work. Um, and I am going to attempt, while I'm looking for your questions and comments, to get her email address for anybody who is interested in getting in contact uh, with Dr. Boniface. Um, it is Robin. 
Boniface, B-O-N-I-F-A-S, at A-S-U dot E-D-U. Robin dot Boniface at A-S-U dot E-D-U. And I'm sure she'd be happy to hear from you. Um, so are there any comments or questions that anyone is having at this point in time? Randy? I don't see any questions coming in, so I guess if there are no questions or comments or concerns, I'm going to go ahead and we'll end the webinar now, but as always, I'm sure you'd be more than happy to answer any questions if some should come up. So I just want to take a few moments and first Thank Marsha for participating in this webinar, and thank all of you for participating as well. I will be emailing the slides to participants from today's webinar as well as a link to the podcast because the webinar is recorded. Um, I will also be posting the webinar on our um, website, and once you go to the website, you will be able to not only view the webinar, but it will be available in closed captioning in case there are any individuals that have any um, hearing impairments that want to participate in the webinar afterwards as well. In addition, be on the lookout uh, for emails from me about upcoming webinars and trainings being sponsored by DPH. After you all log off, please take a few moments to complete the evaluation from today's webinar. Again, thank you so much, Marsha, and I hope that participants today, you've gained a little bit more information and knowledge about the causes, the repercussions, and the remedies of social bullying amongst older adults. Again, thank you, Marsha, and thank you all for participating. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.